Hi everyone, war criminal Tony Blair went on Fareed Zakaria's show on CNN today. For those of you who don't know who Fareed Zakaria is, he's, um, some would say, a journalist. <laughs> I'm not one of them. Uh, he's got a show on CNN and for the first, I think, 10 weeks of Trump's presidency, he never had a good thing to say about him, it's fair to say. And then there was an alleged chemical attack in Syria, of which Mattis has said, there's no proof actually Assad did it, but regardless, Trump sent 59 Tomahawk missiles, you may remember at an airfield. Um, so after 10 weeks of slagging Trump off, what did Fareed Zakaria say about it? I think uh, Donald Trump became president of the United States. I think this was actually a big moment because um, candidate Trump had said that he would never get involved in the uh, Syrian civil war. He told President Obama, you cannot do this without the authorization of Congress. He seemed unconcerned with global norms. President Trump recognized that the president of the United States does have to act to enforce international norms. <laughs> You, you, you're not president of the United States until you've bombed a country illegally. Um, after saying specifically you would not do that time and time and again on the <laughs> campaign trail. Honestly, <laughs> you've, you've got to find that funny because if not, you will cry. Anyway, as I said, war criminal Tony Blair went on his show. So you can imagine you've got Fareed Zakari on one hand and a war criminal on the other. You can imagine this is going to be an absolute debacle. I remember watching this and thinking, oh my God, this is going to be awful. And the whole clip was 20 minutes long. And I'm probably going to take different things that they talked about and do videos on them because honestly, it was ridiculous. But the thing I want to concentrate on in this video is Tony Blair seems to think that, <laughs> that he's got the solution to the problems in Gaza. <laughs> I'm going to cut this segment down. The segment's about three minutes long, but I'm going to cut it down into segments just to show you exactly how pathetic and ridiculous this is. Take a look. Before we get to the larger problem of extremism, I want to ask you about a particular variation of it, Hamas and what had just happened. You have spent so much time dealing with this problem. So straight off the bat there, Straight off the bat, you can see the, where this is going. You can see the angle that this, that this is taking. It, they talk about extremism in the next clip. And he says, before we'll get to extremism, I want to, I want to talk to you about another type of extremism, Hamas. So you can see immediately where the, where the burden of blame is going to be put in this video. It carries on. Do you think it is fair to say, as the Israeli government does, that 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 those 60 people who were killed, that, that that was essentially Hamas's fault because they they sacrificed those people to uh, to media attention. Look, I think it's a tragedy when um, people die as a consequence of what's happening in Gaza. People just die in Gaza. According to Tony Blair, they just die as a result of what's happening in Gaza. They're not shot at 700 yards by an IDF sniper wearing a t-shirt that says one shot two kills with a I'm sure you've seen it by now put the picture up there they just die it carries on and I see it uh, from both sides and you know since I'm actually still involved and in trying to find a way through it's probably better that I don't kind of apportion blame in that way it's really easy really easy Israel, come on, Tony, say it, say it. Just once say Israel in this segment, please. But there has to be a different way forward for Gaza. And in my view, the two absolutely central things that we should be focused on right now in the Middle East peace process. I mean, obviously, you've got the whole question of the peace plan the administration's working on. But the two most important things in my mind are a plan, a humanitarian plan for Gaza, that renews its infrastructure, opens it up, gives people hope and jobs. And I think it is possible that you would get agreement to a significant understanding or truce around violence from Gaza in order to make that From Hamas happen. itself. Yeah. So if Hamas would stop committing this violence, we could get them humanitarian aid. 
Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is exactly what he just said. It carries on. And look, you think policy... Hamas has changed a little. Well, You've I think said that. I think what is happening is that as the region changes, people are having to work out where they are. And there's no future for Hamas unless they're part of their own, you know, the regional partners. And those regional partners are in favor of peace and in favor of a two-state solution. Again, Hamas. He's just saying that Hamas, if only they got their shit together, we could, we could work with partners in the region and come to some solution. Let's hope it's not a final one, eh, hey, Tony? It carries on. So I can't be sure, no one could be sure, but it's worth finding out because you cannot c carry on the situation where you've got more than two million people. And, you know, a quarter of the population is under the age of five, I think. And certainly the average age is, and the median age is 19 in Gaza. What does he think that is? What does he think? By the way, that stat is wrong. It's not 19, it's 17.2. But what does he think that is? Have a wild guess. Could it be, I don't know, the absolutely inhumane conditions they're being forced to live in because of an illegal occupation? Is it because of that? Is it because if, if anybody is lucky enough to actually become an adult, the chances are they're going to get shot by an IDF sniper? Sorry mysteriously die it carries on and this next bit really annoys me if you carry on in this situation you're i mean quite apart from the appalling circumstances that people are living in you know you're going to create a massive crisis okay what you just saw there was a politician trick and i promise you this look at google it i promise you this is the case what you just saw was tony blair do that with his thumb when he's making a point, they do that. Watch it. Hillary Clinton used to do it all the time as well. And David Cameron used to do it as well. They do that. Now, the reason they're taught to do that as a politician is because it looks less threatening than pointing when they're making a point. I promise you that's the case. Google it. It's, it's the truth. So essentially what he's saying there is, if you carry on like this, apart from the appalling conditions that you're living in, so... What he's doing is, he's blaming them for living in the horrible conditions that they're living in. They haven't got a choice. They have to go without electricity for 20 hours a day. Israel just cuts the electricity off to Gaza for 20 hours a day. It's just a blackout. They're on rations. Their drinking water is worse than Flint's was at its worst. And I could honestly run down a list of all the, it's been described as an open air prison. And as somebody, I, I said that in one of my videos recently, and somebody pointed out and said, that's not an open air prison. Prisons are far more luxurious than that. And I thought, crap, you're right. What they're living in is squalor. It's amazing to me that Tony Blair literally just blamed them. But then, he's a war criminal. Should I really be amazed? It carries on. So I'm in favour of doing whatever is necessary to try and bring about that change in the humanitarian situation. But the second thing is there's got to be a way of unifying Palestinian politics in favour of peace and the two-state solution as roughly set out in the Arab Peace Initiative. It's unreal. It really is. He's saying if we can just get Palestinian and Hamas together and on the same page politically, then we can get some aid to them and then we can, we can figure out the, a two-state solution. Do you know who doesn't want a two-state solution? Tony Blair, you absolute imbecile. The right-wing Israeli government, that's who does not want a two-state solution. Palestine have said, okay, we'll accept the 67 borders. No, Israel, don't want to know. Palestine have said, right, okay, can we go through Turkey to the UN and get some talks? No, US blocked it. Israel don't want that. You have to talk directly to Israel. Okay, so, you know, we talk directly to, no, don't want that. What, what the right-wing Israel government wants, Tony Blair, just in case, you know, you're a bit confused about this, 
They want to exterminate the Palestinians. That's what they want. And I'm not saying Israelis here. Israelis don't want that. Israelis who have brainwashed might. But the, the, there are many Israelis who are appalled at this. Especially Israelis who live in other countries. But the right wing Israeli government want this. They want extermination. They want rid of the Palestinian problem. To carry on with their agenda. That's what they want. They want extermination. And he seems to think that, have you noticed that he's just all the blame as far as Tony Blair, so far in this segment, all of the blame, according to Tony Blair, is on Hamas and the Palestinians. The very people who have just been massacred. You can't, there's no peace deal you're going to be able to do if Palestinian politics is still divided between different factions, even factions within factions, and divided in who runs the two geographies of a future Palestinian state, Gaza and the West Bank. So these are the two priorities. The peace plan that the administration is developing, let's hope it's, it's successful. But without those two things, you've no chance, in my view, of getting peace. And that's it. That's the whole interview. Just, un just under three minutes long, two minutes... 50 something seconds and did you notice something in that interview Tony Blair just had a three minute conversation about the situation in Gaza and did not mention Israel once not once everything he talked about was all Hamas and Palestine and it's all their fault that's how he, what he was doing and this is the guy that thinks he can broker a peace deal in the Middle East It's honestly laughable if it wasn't so atrocious. Can you imagine watching that interview, having no prior knowledge to anything that was going on in Gaza or Palestine? Can you imagine having no prior knowledge and watching that interview? You would come out of it thinking, these Palestinians are, are just atrocious, aren't they? It's, they're, they're like animals. They're, they're, they're effing like rabbits. Their median age is 19. There must be an explosion and there must be shagging all over the place. And the, the political, this Hamas, I think it's their political party. They just can't get the stuff together. They, they keep fighting with each other. One of them got shot. Loads of them just keep dying for no reason. They're living in squalor. This is how they, you would think about the situation. If you watch that full three minute segment with no prior knowledge of, the, of what has gone on over there. How can you have a three minute conversation and not mention Israel once? The only person who did was Fareed Zakaria right at the very beginning. And as soon as he did that, Tony Blair went, can't talk about that. Got to talk about the other thing. What does that tell you? What does that tell you? If somebody can send me a list of the donors and the funders of Tony Blair's institute or whatever it's called. I would love to analyse that. I really would. That was a debacle of an interview. And his solution there, his two-step solution to stop Hamas committing violence, um, they do that, they get shot anyway. But to stop them committing violence, so we can get them some humanitarian aid and then get to the table and we'll talk about a two-step solution. It's like, well, you're living in cloud cuckoo land. You really are. You're living in cloud cuckoo. That's what he said he would do right from the very start, those two things. You know what? I've got one thing. One thing that needs to happen immediately, Tony, which trumps both of the things, that ridiculous things that he just proposed. Here's the one thing I want. Stop killing unarmed innocent Palestinians that's it you could go number two stop treating them like animals it's unbelievable well it, it, it's not unbelievable because it's CNN but it, it's amazing to me how the flag it, like CNN the, the most trusted name in news oh I suppose this is an apple is it CNN They bring on a war criminal. 
a war criminal. And is it CNN or MSNBC that's just hired James Clapper? A guy who lied to the Senate under oath. Twice. And he's just got a job on, on cable news. These are crazy times we're living in. They really are. I'll probably do another segment on this interview that was 20 minutes long and they talked about three or four subjects. And honestly, the other subjects they talked about, they weren't much better. But this was just appalling. Thanks very much for watching. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That was just, I had to talk about it though. Um, please subscribe. Please hit the bell as well. Otherwise, you won't get a notification of the next time I drop a video because YouTube will hide them from you. Um, if you can, please support me on Patreon. If you can't, please support me by sharing the videos uh, wherever you can. I don't make any money from YouTube. Everything I get is from you people, and I really appreciate it. Just thanks so much for your support. And until next time, peace. Take care.